Hey folks, this is Tony Day, going to do an update for you on my uh, exploration of using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and using Ace's workflows. Now, um, I got some helpful advice. I also was doing some research and cooling down and trying to really understand what was going on. Um, so I will show you some examples of what you can do as a workaround from what I've discovered um, with the help of some people and forums and stuff like that. If you haven't seen the problem I was having, please go back and watch that video. Um, it talks about how when I was using compressed files with the, from the uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, um, using the uh, color management with ACES wasn't really working right. So I'll just do a really quick recap on that so you can see and then also show you one of the workarounds that was uh, explained. So um, here we have a correction node and then we have the raw footage and this was the issue we were seeing. This is compressed uh, from the raw to be 10 and 12 bit files just for the hell of it to see what would happen. Now ProRes I was having the same issues so it's not really that it's something to do with the encoding it's just this is what happens. Now the reason this is happening and this is what I had suspected was that there's no uh, in input device transform, okay? So you see here, there's no Gen 4 stuff, and um, there's no Pocket 4K uh, specific color space for us to choose, which means that somebody, whoever, needs to give us this in order for this to work properly with the Pocket cameras, because neither the 6K or the 4K is in. So um, this wasn't something I was doing wrong, actually. It was just that using this method, it's just not really possible to do it properly um, with the even native ProRes uh, compressed files from the Pocket 4K. So what's a workaround? Uh, the workaround, if you want to use this particular method through here in the uh, tab, what we need to do is transcode these uh, Pocket 4K uh, files into a color space that uh, has an IDT. So I was uh, recommended the red uh, uh, wide gamut uh, log 3G10, and this is the result. So both of these, a 10 and a 12 bit uh, transcode, um, this all works, okay? So basically because uh, the input um, transform that I've selected here is red wide gamut, hold on, try that again. Uh, red wide gamut log 3G10 through this list, you can see that they're working properly. You see? Now let's try something really quick uh, to see. We'll do um, project on both. And then we'll go into here and we'll pick that red wide gamut log 3G10. I haven't tried this, um, but I'm pretty sure it should work. And yes, so it does work. So if you transcode basically all your compressed footage into that red wide gamut uh, log 3G10 color space, then this will all work the way it's supposed to. And then you can just do your grading like normal and it's no problem. Now, the thing is that I'm not really gonna do that because I don't wanna transcode all of my footage into that color space that it's just not interesting to me because it's going to take some time and then it's going to require me to store all of that uh, additional stuff because I'm not going to get rid of my original files right so um, you know this is one way but I'm not going to do it okay uh, so let me show you another way now this way uh, some people are going to argue that it's not a real way to do it but from my understanding and from going to the ACES forums um, this is a, an alternative method that does deliver somewhat uh, different results. Uh, it's measurable, but not, you know, super obvious. And especially if you're doing it the same way across a project, it probably won't matter. So unless someone's got a specific reason to tell me why this doesn't work right, or you shouldn't do it this way, uh, and then I will pin your comment, uh, assuming that you're being a rational human being about it, um, uh, unless someone has that uh, uh, reason that makes sense, this should work fine. So I'm going to just do DaVinci Wire GB. We're going to do Timeline Color Space Rec 709. This isn't really going to matter for our purposes. And um, so the first thing that we'll notice is that the 
Blackmagic uh, Pocket 4K 10 and 12 bit files, they match our raw file. See, the uh, correction, which is the same across all the clips here, delivers the exact same results, right? I mean, the, the slight little differences is because of compression, um, but for all of our reasons, which is specifically the colors and how the gamma is being all interpolated and everything, we can see that it's all fine, right? But the red wide gamut ones are not, see? They're not fine. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this pseudo ACES workflow and break it down uh, so we can understand what's going on and then I'll show you some options with it, okay? So we're gonna start with these red wide gamut ones because these actually have an ACES IDT, right? So I'm just gonna do this. Okay. So what do we do? Um, well, the way that ACES works in the tab is you've got an input that you choose and it has to have an IDT and then you do your work and then it outputs and you can change that output to a number of different uh, uh, color spaces. So it should be helpful because if you wanna quickly you know, send it to a different color space and it, you want it all to be pretty uniform across the bat, which is supposed to be how ACES works, um, you know, between different departments and all that kind of stuff, you should uh, be able to do it the same way, okay? So we've got, two, we've got two nodes down here We've got an input and an output. Now, both of these are ACES transform nodes, okay? See, ACES transform. The first one is gonna go from red wide gamut, uh, log three G10, and the output's gonna be ACES CCT, see? The output is gonna go uh, ACES 1.1, you've got our input is ACES CCT, and the output's rec 709, okay? So that's how this is working. And then we've got our corrections or whatever we're gonna do in the middle. So this here is where you should be doing your work. The reason is that the way that uh, this one works, the ACES CCT, is uh, the, a similar way where you've got your input, you've got an input and you've got an output and all your work is happening in the middle of all that, okay? So that's why it should be done in here. If you don't like how this works with the output, then just don't work in ACES. There are benefits to using ACES. There's some cool things that I like about it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll make a video about that, but um, I, do, I do like it somewhat. Um, not sure if I'll change completely over to it, but that's regardless. Um, anyway, getting back into this. Uh, so uh, you've got this kind of work around here, right? Um, and it works for both of these, uh, transcoded, okay? Now, uh, the issue is here. Now I'm going to turn this one off because we'll talk about that in a second. And we'll attach here. So this is the exact same setup that we have in these, but you can see that it doesn't work right. It should be obvious to you why it doesn't work right. It's because this input is red wide gamut log 3G10 and the output's ACES CCT. The input's wrong, right? So we need to write this wrong. We do this by adding a color space transform to the front of this. We're going to go from Black Magic Pocket 4K Film Gen 4. Then we're going to go to red wide gamut RGB. Output gamma is going to be red log 3G10 because uh, this is the proper color space that we're transforming. We turn this on and bingo, bango, we've got matching colors and gamma. Okay, so this works. Um, and then we'll just, we basically copy pasted that to our other compressed files to make sure that it works and it does. So all of our source footage is now, uh, being interpolated into Rec. 709 using ACES and it all looks like it's matching. Now I'm going to add one more thing here. Um, a little bit of an explanation about this end node. So the reason why this output is important is because if you need to change this, let's say to like ACES CG or something, um, this uh, needs needs to be done at the end. Because if you have this, you know, if you have you know this, uh, let's say on this this side over here, 
this is going to be using this information to make your adjustments and we don't want that that would kind of break the workflow so it you shouldn't be doing it that way it should be happening in the middle um, but let's say you need to do this you know output to ACE CG does that mean you have to go to each one of these and manually you know go in and select that yes you would if you set it up this way an alternative to putting this output node in the clip is to actually put the output node in the timeline let me show you okay uh, we're gonna go through we're gonna turn off all of those output transforms and we are going to copy one we're gonna go to the timeline actually we already did it we'll turn that one on this one's going to sRGB we'll go to rec 709 and you can see that all of our footage is being then put to the output of rec 709 see Um, and this makes it where when you want to change, let's say ACE CG, see that? They all are the same. If you want to do, uh, oops, if you want to do Rec 2020 for whatever reason, you can output to Rec 2020. So um, this doing it in the, the output, the ACES transform output in the timeline can save you time if you're doing this, you know, on the regular, having, having to change. Uh, your output color space and this would function pretty much the same as how this one works the uh, output um, you know this is happening at the very very end and it, it affects all your clips so by doing it here in your timeline you can effectively do the same thing so uh, we'll just put that back to rec 709 now um, again uh, you know these workarounds you don't have to do this if you don't want to if, if you're being told by someone that you have to do this for a project you know get into aces and you're using footage that just doesn't have an IDT or whatever this is a way to do it other than transcoding um, you know unless somebody else got a reason why this you know shouldn't be done I'd like to know uh, please let me know below and I could try to pin it um, my opinion is that if you're doing some work and especially if you know you're uh, stakeholders in your project are saying this is a perfectly fine workflow uh, especially if you're using source footage from all kinds of different cameras that might not have a direct IDT and you don't want to spend the money to do all that transcoding it looks like this should work perfectly fine uh, for you know all the purposes that you do this for I hope this was helpful um, this is definitely uh, an interesting little experiment at least for me I know that for uh, some people trying to figure this out uh, it was uh, fun so uh, I hope that you all enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something. I will continue to tinker around. Um, I think that a call to black magic design is in order or somebody to get an IDT for the pocket cameras because the pocket 4K and 6K ones are not available and I would like to have them personally uh, for ACES. So thank you all for, for watching. Um, if you have any more tips uh, about getting you know, the results I'm looking for, which is matching cameras easily, um, with ACEs, uh, especially if they don't have an IDT, please let me know. Um, and uh, I'm very interested to see uh, what you say. Thanks a lot, everybody.